order. The next item of business is the final stage of the Private Tenancies Coronavirus Modifications Bill. I call the Minister for Communities to move the final stage. Thank you. The final stage of the Private Tenancies Coronavirus Modifications Bill has been moved. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be uh, no time limit upon this debate, and I call the Minister to open the debate on the Bill. Minister. Yeah, just thanks very much, um, and again, thank you to members. And I suppose I welcome this opportunity to speak about uh, my bill, uh, which responds to the present outbreak of the coronavirus here, and indeed the public health emergency that follows. And due to the crisis caused by the pandemic, it has been necessary for me to take steps to introduce measures to help prevent and reduce significant numbers of households becoming or being under threat of being homeless at a time of crisis and when housing um, and health and other public services are under extreme pressure and where there is a significant risk to individuals, um, to their health and also their well-being as a result. This bill is necessary during this unprecedented public health emergency to ensure the private renters are provided uh, with protections during this difficult crisis. And I know there has been some talk, um, well, I suppose I should just say that any delay um, would be a delay on those protections, and that's the critical point here. The public health advice is clear. It is to stay at home, protect our key workers, and to save lives. And I also consider the bill necessary to prevent the spread of coronavirus and to provide private renters with additional support as we battle COVID-19. I know it has been touched on that there was a fear in terms of this response around challenging landlords um, or others in courts, and I do have to say that I don't fear any landlord, I don't fear any developer, I never have, and in fact, as a community and a political activist, I've actually fought um, all the way through to the High Court landlords in terms of the rights of communities, and I'll continue to do that in the time ahead, so I don't fear any of them. But my concern is about the time scale and the response. And if you start to get into an argument around rights, you then leave people open to having no protection. And for me, um, that that's irresponsible if I done that, or if anyone else done that within this chamber, because you would be leaving people unprotected for a longer period. Um, and I think that that would be um, a bigger uh, disgrace. The response to the public health emergency uh, will endeavour to reduce the movement of people between households within the private rented sector, allowing shielding of vulnerable people, self-isolation and social distancing. In line with the public health advice, um, private renters continue to be a group obviously facing significant concerns and anxiety during this period, and in particular due to loss of employment uh, for many. These are extraordinary times where a number of people will temporarily struggle to pay their rent through no fault of their own. They need certainty in the meantime and their homes uh, to ensure that they're safe and that their landlords can't move to evict them. This bill will ensure that no renter in private accommodation will be forced out of their home during this difficult time. Landlords will now be required to give tenants 12 weeks notice to quit before seeking a court order to begin proceedings to evict and therefore reduce the possibility of tenants within the private rented sector becoming homeless. This will mean that no tenant is evicted because of inability to pay rent during this period of economic disruption. And my department will publish guidance in relation to this legislative change, um, which will assist tenants and landlords in better understanding the new rights and obligations which will come into effect under this new law. Finally, um, numerous stakeholders uh, have worked closely with the Department in the development of this bill, and I want to take this opportunity to thank them all for their contributions. That's those within other government departments, legal services, but importantly those at the grassroots, those within the housing rights sector also. And again, I just want to extend the opportunity for the speediness in which they've responded um, to this emergent situation. And I join with those right across government and indeed within our health service, again, to urge everyone to stay at home and stay safe at this time. I want to thank members of the committee and again the chair of the committee as well for their support in helping get the legislation through so quickly. Um, and I do want to thank all of the officials 
um, who have worked to help do this, both here in the Assembly but also within my department and legal teams. And indeed, David and Ailish, who have worked on this closely, are here in the Chamber uh, this evening. So again, I hope all parties can give uh, this bill their full support. I hope they can understand the reasons why I have brought this bill, why I don't want to delay in the bill, because now is the time for action and not delay. So I commend this bill to the Assembly. I beg to move. Thank you. I call the Chair of the Committee, Mrs Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. And I rise as Chair of the Committee um, to give the Committee's perspective. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, despite the haste in which this bill has progressed through the House, it will bring some comfort to those people in the private rented rent sector who fear eviction as a result of the loss of income due to COVID-19. The bill is proportionate, broadly equating to the three-month mortgage holiday for mortgage holders, which includes by to let landlords. Fundamentally, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, extending the notice to quit period from four to twelve weeks allows all parties but particularly tenants and landlords, uh, the time required to come to arrangements in respect of rent payments. In that regard, the bill is not carte blanche for tenants not to pay their rent. Importantly, it will also allow people to continue to adhere to public health advice on social distancing, self-isolation and shielding without the added anxiety of an eviction notice hanging over their heads. Indeed, since the committee was last briefed on the bill, the department has subsequently issued guidance to landlords and tenants on the de department's expectations that landlords and tenants will come to reasonable agreements on the level of rent that tenants are able to pay. This is in the context of the committee's recognition that tenants will be able to avail of financial support such as the furlough scheme, discretionary support and universal credit. In effect, the 12-week period gives both tenants and landlords time to reach these agreements without recourse to evictions. Of course, none of us know what the situation will be like after the initial 12-week period has finished, so the flexibility to extend this period is important. As I mentioned last week, 18 per cent of the population live in accommodation in the private rented sector in 134,000 properties. The Committee, like all members of this House, recognise the potential for tenants in rent arrears to be evicted and rendered homeless. That would simply shift the problem from one part of our system to another. The question of how we emerge from this crisis, even in the midst of managing it, is gaining more traction. It is therefore welcome that the Department is engaging with the court service and landlords so that there is not a default to landlords seeking court orders to evict tenants at the, as the crisis subsides and thus increase the number of homeless here in Northern Ireland. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, the Committee welcomed this bill and agreed to the accelerated passage procedure, reflecting the urgency at which it is needed to be enacted. The Committee recognises this legislation as another element in our approach to supporting those people who are most in need, and we therefore lend the bill our support. Thank you. I call Mr. Mark Durkin. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Principal. Uh, Deputy Speaker, I rise to support the bill as well. Uh, I'm not going to. Members will be relieved to hear, and the Minister will be relieved to hear, rehearse all the points that I and others made last week, some again this morning, and some again uh, this afternoon. But one thing that I really do want to do is place on record again our thanks to the Minister, yes, but also to the Department, to the Housing Executive and those working in the housing and homelessness sector, whether it be on the phone lines or on the ground, that they have performed brilliantly throughout this crisis, and I am sure they will continue to do so. Uh, just to touch also on the importance of continuing that work uh, with landlords as well. They are a, a critical part of the housing jigsaw. Uh, and, and another thing that I might elaborate a wee bit on, the, Minister might not be as happy about, but a week has passed since we raised the issue about support for students. I am not going to apologise for uh, raising that again. We know that the Department for Economy is responsible for students, but Minister Hargey has informed us of her involvement in cross-departmental efforts to sort out a safety net for students, especially those still paying rent for properties that they can no longer inhabit those that are, are, are now 
as a consequence of the economic situation and the lockdown, unable to find employment, and have returned to and placed an additional financial burden on already struggling households, all of which is bound to have a huge impact on a student or any person's uh, mental health as well. We see how well the Minister's Department was able to work with education in terms of finding a solution for and ensuring support for children and families dependent on free school meals. And we need to see similar collaboration uh, to support students. I accept that this bill was not the vehicle to bring that support in on, but there are people in real hardship here. They really need help. So I'd like to ask the Minister for an update on that at, at, at the earliest possible opportunity. In terms of this bill, I say no problem supporting it. I uh, welcome it very much. Thank you. I call Mr Jonathan Buckley. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And again, uh, in echoing the comments of, of Mr Durkin, I don't intend to go over the ground that I, I was on last week. Uh, I, I think that we have well rehearsed the merits uh, of this bill, albeit within very difficult circumstances. And the bill is a direct response to COVID-19 and the need to have some sort of uh, remit and responsibility uh, placed upon those in private accommodation and, and landlords, etc. It's broadly in line with the uh, uh, provisions that are already in place for those within housing executive properties, etc. And again, it allows the Minister the flexibility in relation to uh, the moving situation to broadly reflect um, the situation that has been provided for the three month mortgage holiday for those um, landlords. Is that an intervention, maybe? <laughs> I'll gladly give way. Um, so, I, so I think, within the, 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 given the flexibility and the timely nature, it, it is fair given the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, I hope the minister would, would indulge me, and indeed you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, if I asked another point of the minister, because this will be the only opportunity that perhaps she would be able to address this issue in the house. Um, but it, it's broadly in, in relation to, obviously. Uh, and I pay a tribute to the House authorities and indeed you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, and how you have conducted the business within this place over the period of COVID-19. Uh, I think Stormont has indeed led on that, and I think that uh, Westminster now meeting as well has been important. But my point still stands, and I am sure mem other members will agree. Councils are a key linchpin, and as the Minister with responsibility for councils, they are a key linchpin in the response the COVID-19 response required. Many of the chief executives are actually hiding behind the Local Government Act 2014 and the need for public admittance to public galleries. I feel that the Minister, if she could maybe provide detail at a later date, to respond on this issue. Again, the, the detail that we see here in the private tenancies, there is indeed a nature within local councils that they must react in a way that is suitable uh, to the response that we need. And I know the Minister will maybe take this up on a later point. But by and large, um, as we move forward uh, on this point, I, I welcome the Minister's commitment to um, to legislation, legislative provision to protect those in uh, private rented accommodation. They are, in many regards, many of the most vulnerable in society. And we have watched as the Minister has put in place different provisions to provide uh, help for those in vulnerable positions. But I would say, equally, we must go above and beyond what is there at present. I, I particularly think of, and I know your department is actively looking at uh, the supermarket uh, priority list at the moment. But again, we are in the midst of this epidemic, and I hope that the Minister will maybe see some clarity in that in the future to get that scheme implemented. And I appreciate the indulgence to go beyond where we are, but I thank the Minister for listening. The Member veered very far from the content of that bill, but given that he prefaced, prefaced his um, bad behaviour with nice things about me, uh, he, learned that, uh, he learned that flattery will get him everywhere. Um, that's right. Um, I call the Minister to wind on the debate. Yeah, no, um, thanks very much. I'm not going to talk too long. Again, it is just to take the opportunity to thank uh, the committee, the chair of the committee, obviously, in terms of the speediness in which they've approached it, the Speaker's office as well, in terms of allowing this to be done within two days, and indeed all of the MLAs who have contributed um, to the debate um, and obviously wanting to get legislation through as soon as possible. I reiterate the call. I mean, the staff within the department um, and those activists out on 
the, in the community in terms of that community response have been amazing throughout this whole pandemic um, in terms of working together, collaboration. Um, and I think what it's really shown is things that couldn't be moved before could be moved through this pandemic. And if they can be done through the pandemic, they can certainly be done after the pandemic as well. And hopefully there will be a lot of lessons learned um, as a result of this in the time ahead. The issue of students, I mean, it's not within my remit um, in terms of this issue. That said, I know it has come um, up as an issue. Um, and obviously, somebody that's an elected representative in South Belfast um, with the Holy Lands, I mean, we're cheek by jowl to a local university, and there are a lot of students. I have been in contact uh, with the Department of Economy that do have the responsibility, obviously, in terms of the Student Hardship Fund, looking at additional resources and what else can be done. Anything that's within my remit, I have acted on. Um, in terms of seeing what we can do around the guidance that has been given out around additional financial support, declaring it an emergency to ensure that groups like students can avail of that support as well. So I have moved on those issues, but if it's not within my competency or remit, I can't go into another department and tell them what to do. And I would encourage any members then to engage um, in a collaborative way then with those other ministers as well, as I will do. Um, and I know um, and I'm sure that that minister will bring forward um, steps in terms of dealing with this issue. But I would ask members to take it up as well, to engage in a constructive way um, with the minister and the economy um, also. Um, I suppose the last thing, I mean, again, I just want to uh, thank people. I welcome back on the other um, thing I'll even write out in terms of an update on those issues around councils and, and supermarket priorities because we're hoping to have movement on that issue um, in the next week. Um, and again, I just want to end by commending the bill to the House. Thank you. The question is that the private tenancies coronavirus modifications bill do now pass. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, if any. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Before I move to the adjournment, I'm not sure whether members have received notification or not, but there will be a meeting of the ad hoc committee on the response.